going on, man? What's up? Here, let me turn on my uh, camera. I'm a liver king now. <clears throat> I know, dude. You are. Way too much seasoning. My God, I'm going to have acid reflux till Sunday. Not good. How are you? Good, 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 good. Yeah, I uh, I was on call last night, so I get post call today. They give us post call now. Well, good stuff, man. Yeah, how's your day going? You uh, you finished in the office? Yeah, ended up uh, about an hour early. So kind of a lot of new patients, but slow day nonetheless. All right, an hour early. Yeah, that's pretty good. Always is, man. Oh, yeah. Let me turn off this brightness a little bit. Dude, so wait, who closes up your office? You just, you could like, this is your office? You just get to hang out? Yeah, I mean, I can leave whenever I have staff that have keys as well. So um, they close it up if I end up leaving earlier. That's pretty good. That's great. Yeah, man. So uh, where'd we leave off? Like we're we're diving real deep last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were getting into it. We We left off talking about the program, talking about the, um, <clears throat> You were calling it Wi-Fi, right? Wi-Fi money. What does that What does that mean? I, I... Yeah, so that's kind of what we were talking about. Um, like you know the bow tie crew on like Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Pop up. So, um, one of them, like the guy who started the whole thing, uh, like bow tie bull, he kind of like coined that term. And uh, essentially, what it is is just uh, being able to create passive income or just a source of income through your computer right yeah yeah that's kind of this whole concept of like wi-fi money okay oh oh okay so just like trending in the background it's making money while you're doing, doing whatever yeah that's what we have this all this technology for i mean i think we should be learning I'm sure you have your own theories and thoughts on this. Our whole schooling systems teaching us stuff that was helpful in, in 1880, you know, but like but, we have all this technology. Now we need to learn how to use the technology to work for us. And that's, oh, what, I, we, right? that's what it's about. It's about having stuff, little machines, te technological machines trending the background that are just making money. Yeah. It's a uh, education system. Very, very different. Uh, I guess the, the way society is set up today is very different than what, uh, we need workers to do. So, I mean, I think it was, uh, God, I forget, one of the, the robber barons, those oil titans back in the day, set up like the modern day uh, schooling system. And mm -hmm. to this day, they'll use the exact same schooling system, which is like outdated. So, mm, right, right, right. I mean, it's, it's so outdated. It's kind of embarrassing at this point, but we'll, uh, we'll revamp it at, at some day. Didn't, Elon start to make a new system where uh I think he just created his own school which was like based off of like the Montessori schools or whatever so I mean it's I don't know how any of that stuff works I don't I don't have kids I don't really know people I'm not too close with people who have kids so yeah but uh yeah is see how it plays out I know YouTube University uh I mean how many times have you in dental school or in residency, you knew you had to do something. Well, you watched a YouTube video before. Yep. That's, that's literally it. That's it. All the YouTube videos, <clears throat> Google YouTube videos. Now, dude, I chat GPT everything now. What Damn. I did, did you see, uh, do I have you on LinkedIn? Dude, I don't even use LinkedIn like ever. Really? I mean, honestly, no. TikTok for you, yes. LinkedIn, no. LinkedIn's perfect for me because I'm getting I'm getting job offer, not well, I'm getting leads into job offers potentially, literally by by like a couple times a week. I'd probably say on average three times a week, two to three times a week. But but it's all entirely through LinkedIn because I'm building the network there. I'm making content on LinkedIn. I use ChatGPT. That's ChatGPT. That's what I was getting to to make content. I make these little brief art, these little quick reads. Where I'll take like a topic, I'll ask a question to ChatGPT, it'll pop out the answer, and then I'll add a figure to it, and I'll just what? It's it's genius, man. Like I I have ChatGPT do so many things like that. I've had had it make contracts for me, emails for me, dude. I 
I don't see why a lot of people don't don't use it. And you just do a quick read. And uh, it's to the point it's like uh, draft a Twitter, draft a tweet for me with less than 100 words with using this topic. And it just like does a full full analysis of everything. It's like unbelievable. Right. And then defining your question and tweaking it by the detail allows it to you pull more information out of the chat GVT. It's it's really incredible. I just put out an article, the neck dissection one. Where do you think I yeah. compiled all that from? Asking different questions, putting it to one article, put a figure with it, spit it out. I got to start doing that on Twitter. I, I should probably go down that route. I would. And the way I would do it, I'll probably end up doing it eventually, but for you is to figure out like what kind of content is going to gain followers on Twitter. I don't know. That's just how I think of that. That's the thing. Like, what have you noticed? Like the majority of the people on, on Twitter are at this point. Cause I feel like it's a lot of finance, crypto bros. I don't see a lot of like just regular everyday people on it. Right. Kind of until like you see that big shift of um, the content creators kind of come from like TikTok and Instagram and really start to utilize that platform. Because I mean, I think this morning or yesterday they paid out creators again. And like you see people posting about it. Quite honestly, it's a lot of money from like, like just ad revenue sharing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's less work and more money made for two creators than any of the other platforms. Yeah. So I think they're going to be the ones that are going to spearhead it when everyone kind of sees how much they're making. They're going to shift there. Their followers are going to have to shift there. And Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As well. so. It's actually that's a really good point, because, I mean, you and I both know a lot of people know the wave is coming. And because Twitter was one of the first ones, it was it was back there with the original Facebook and, and MySpace, basically. And and um, Tumblr, I think, was it Tumblr or? I think it was Tumblr, right? It was like, it was way back, died out. And now, now we're in like desert where it's, it's like Bitcoin when it dropped back down to one, $2,000 in 2016. And now is where the, the attention starts to trickle back in. So I do think we're early. I think it's perfect timing to really start. And I'll, I'll do this with you. I think we should really figure out kind of what gains the attention on Twitter. Cause it is very different from everything else. There aren't girls on there just taking pictures in the mirror of their ass, you know? And that's well, there definitely are in the crypto community. Really? No. Yeah. Not so much their ass, but more so their face and boobs. So like. Really? Oh, it still works. Like, it doesn't matter what platform you're on. If if you're an attractive woman, dude, it's game over. Like, you can really leverage these platforms to skyrocket whatever it is you're trying to, to push. It's kind of insane. Crazy, man. Uh, I thought they weren't there. Uh, well, I guess I guess I was wrong. Well, nonetheless, we'll we'll work on that. So that's oh two things. One more question before we get to the marketing and gaining more. Oh, I'm just looking at it this morning. It was um, case acceptance, selective case acceptance using your system. I want to get into that, and then I want to get into like kind of talking about content creation for that. But first. You, we we were talking about diet last time, but you didn't mention what you put in your morning smoothie. Yes. Okay. So raw milk, mm -hmm. kefir, blueberries, a banana, avocado. Um, avocado? Little, avocado, a little bit of creatine, and uh, that is it. What was the second thing? So raw milk, and then the second was? Blueberries, banana, and avocado. Really? That how is avocado mix in there? Dude, it's great. Provides all the fat that I need, and uh, yeah. and you just look at the nutritional content of that. It, it's mind blowing. You just got to make sure whatever it is you buy, like vegetables or fruits, the sticker on it doesn't have the number four in the like because the the sticker, uh, the front number, if it has a number four. It, the way that it was like grown as heavy pesticide use and uh, just like ultra depleted soils and uh, the farming practices are just not right. So like the food itself is kind of tainted mm. and very heavy with pesticide use. 
number four. And that's, is that when you buy raw fruits, what if you got by like guac and it's referring to the avocado? Does that, is that different? I don't know. I've never like bought guac, but I mean, if, um, if you just go and you look up like bananas or avocados at the store, you're going to see a sticker and it's going to have like a couple numbers on that sticker. And if the first number is four, then that's kind of was, it was raised and you got to stay away from that. Interesting. I'm gonna have to look at that. I've been getting bananas. I'll have to I'll have to look at the sticker. Huh. I know you don't like that, but I'm gonna have to use almond milk until I can get my my tolerance back up to milk. <laughs> goat, milk. goat milk, uh very, very different. Like most people who have issues with cow's milk, they don't have any issues with goat. Huh. Have you had goat milk? I I did when I was not able to get my raw milk for the past like month or so because I was always out of town when my dealer was coming in. Yeah. Um, goat milk. And honestly, it's great. It's not raw milk, but it's, it's great. I'll, I'll have to take a look at that one. On yeah. I don't have work the next day. <laughs> All right. So, so where, so where we left off last time, as far as the marketing goes, we, I'm trying to, to bring it back. We were talking about how you were spending three thousand dollars, about three thousand, three grand, for your marketing team or marketing person. Then you cut back, and I think it was something like twenty seven, twenty three hundred or twenty seven hundred was already out competing what was being done with the three grand. I think yeah, we right around there. So pretty much about like uh, with about like sixty six percent of. Um, of what I was spending originally was already kind of like right in line. So if I'm spending about like 3000, if I'm spending as much as I spent uh, with them, like it would absolutely blow them out of the water. But that's because like, I figured out how to do the whole retargeting and, and all that stuff. So I think every small business, I think definitely every dental author should, because um, I don't know about you, but, I would always kind of silence ads. And then when I started to go down this route, I was like, no, I want these ads to play because I want to see where they're coming from because I want to eventually kind of create a course and like have it be directed towards dentists and other small business people, med spa owner, whatever, but directed towards that community because I live in Vegas, right? I'm getting ads from a small dental office in Mississippi, in Colorado, in Tennessee, right? And they're not like big time cosmetic dentists where people are flying in from all over the world to go see this person, right? So there's no reason for them to advertise in Vegas. It's just the way that the con they're using a company and the company is just literally setting the United States as the location and just running ads. And they're probably picking ads that say dentist and stuff like that. It's like, why are you even like marketing the dentist. Dentists should not ever see this ad because you're wasting money at that point, right? Throwing money out the window. Throwing money right out the window. And the geographic marketing out the window and then the actual ad, who you're tar who they're targeting, it makes no sense. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so I just, I've been letting it run and I just want to see. And uh, so I'll put something out like that at some point in the near future because I, I think like, these small businesses are just getting scammed and like, you don't really even have to do that much work at the end of the day, take a little bit of time to learn about it. Uh, I mean, literally set aside a whole day and just mm -hmm. do a full deep dive. And then a couple hours over the course of um, a couple hours over the course of um, a week or something like that. And you can set up your ads you, or, and then hire somebody to make the ads for you. Right. And at that point, you haven't even spent three thousand dollars, right? Yeah. But you stuff that you can just continuously run, and you're gonna save a ton of money. You're gonna have a lot higher foot traffic, uh, or calls, or website views, whatever your goal is. And at the end of the day, like you can put that same budget that you're using towards that company, and you're gonna have an increase in sales, or you can do something where, where you cut back on the amount of money that you're spending on ads, but it's sad because I mean, these businesses, you think about it, three grand a month over the course of a year is $36,000. Like for a small business, like yeah, mm -hmm. the dentist 
we make a little bit more money. So, but at the same time, if I could save $36,000 a year, I'm going to take it. That's yeah. stuff I, I can use for equipment, for paying my staff more, for whatever, you know, something that actually. So it's kind of crazy. Definitely. Actually, that's something. So are you using Google or Facebook? Like geographic? Um, computer? So I'm using Facebook. I have to teach myself, sit down and teach myself Google retargeting. I'm running some ads on, on Google, but uh, because I work for corporate, right? I can't change the code in my website. So I had to, which kind of sucks. That's the big thing, but that's what's like is really going to come into play with yeah. um, a lot of these other people because they're a small business. They can change the code in their website mm. and you literally track everything. And so I've been seeing that with my course. I've been seeing that with like the PDFs that I'm selling and all that type of stuff. And one of the big reasons I was like trying to sell and push those PDFs was to really kind of get an understanding for how does all this marketing work with like retargeting and um all that type of stuff and so i kind of figured it out with that and then with the platform that i'm using for the course as well um i have all the data and everything it's kind of mind-blowing what you can do um but i think i'm pretty i'm pretty well versed at least right now with uh facebook and uh it's mind-blowing what you can do with it like yeah. it, it you can really waste a lot of money with it if you don't know what you're doing but if you know just basic, basic stuff, you can really have a huge impact on whatever it is that you're trying to push. You're using YouTube, Google to learn about the Facebook? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Using that, but also running ads on, on Google and YouTube as well. So, and Google it just really dumbs it down for you. So you can see exactly like how many people are clicking on whatever it is that you're you're pushing to your website and stuff like that and you can check like landing page views and which is like uh if somebody interacts with the website as opposed to somebody just clicking the link and you can target it where your goal is for a sale right or for a landing page view which means somebody spent more time on the page or just a link right that means they click it but let's just say for whatever reason, they exited out before they even got to the page, right? But the thing is, Facebook and Google has all this information that if you want to optimize it for like a landing page view or a sale, it's going to push that ad to people who are most likely to buy something or mm -hmm. most likely to check out that page, which is crazy. Yeah. It's just data is the new oil. And there's a reason why people say that. Right. And I guess they're doing that from recent searches. I mean, I know Facebook, they'll catch you with your microphone on and they know that you're looking for a dental implant or stuff like that. Yeah. It's wild. It's really, really wild. And uh, if you know what you're doing, you can you can make a lot of money or, and, or save a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> did, I, did I tell you about the dentist map that we're slowly in the process of creating we're create we created the pre-dent mentor map now and that's we're growing that that's going to be the prototype for the dentist map and did i tell you about my kind of the vision we have is to create all of that in the back end because look we're not gonna we're not gonna change we're not gonna teach dentists how to learn facebook more like we yeah. are right and your course will but it's gonna get you know like in the grand scheme of things like handfuls of people right which is great exactly. But to get everyone on board, it, mean, it means dumbing it down into a language that they understand. So if you think about it, if they were to log into this website, this portal, and they already have their profile in it, it's linked to their website, et cetera, they could go in the back end of their profile and say, you know what, I want more root canals this month. And then they turn that knob up to like a 10 or, you know, whatever it may be. That would be insane. That's where. Looking That's at a real challenge to set up but eventually someone's going to do it so why not have it be you guys and quite honestly if you guys can get that dude because then that's the danger of all time exactly you just log in you turn it up to 10 i want i want trying to get about 10 more root canals this month i want 10 more implants you turn that knob up whatever it is on the back end of the website you pay the extra fee you get them and you make that much more profit and it's going to be 
it allows the market to be a lot more in your control. Um, I, I think I that's what the future will be. So that's why I wanted to keep this conversation with you going now, right? Well, one, I want to work with you, like literally with marketing. And I want to see what you can do with TikTok, especially and how that will translate to Twitter, to Instagram. Because I told you, I I really started to hit hit the ground running. It took me two a year and a half to make content on TikTok that actually would really start to generate views, right? Yeah. And I it after about three or four months of that, I was like, what if I repost? Because I was only making content towards TikTok, only towards Instagram, only towards LinkedIn. And then that's when I when I started to cross pollinate, that's when Instagram exploded. That literally that one reel just exploded. It's also what got me into a little bit of stickiness with, you know, the institution here. But um, that's what I want to see you do, man. Yeah. No, I mean, you're you're not the first person because we talked a little bit earlier today and you're not the first person that mentioned doing things like that on TikTok and then putting it on other platforms versus will have greater success versus going from Instagram or from Twitter to TikTok. Right. Exactly. But you don't you 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 have something against TikTok, or you just think it's going to be banned soon, or I don't know, dude. I just um, because of what Twitter's doing, I just I can't see it being a thing that's just longer than a moment in time. Where oh, I see. Whereas TikTok, I mean, quite literally, it's going to be a moment in time. Whether it's five or ten years, that's not going to be a fifty year. I don't even a five or 10 year thing. I don't think like more than maybe a couple years. I think like once Twitter really gets rocking and rolling, I think like, I think like kind of around election season is when you're going to start to. Yeah. Because I mean, that's when a lot of people are going to be on social media to really kind of get their news. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be never kind of, take advantage of, of that time. And I don't see how anyone can do it better than, than Elon Musk. And I think they're going to have a lot of their stuff rolled out by that point in time. Mm. Uh, to, yeah, so they can really capture a huge audience. So that's kind of what I'm like kind of debating about is that whole thing. So I, a year and a half, a little less than a year and a half from now. About a yeah. year, about a year from now. Yeah, I think we're gonna see like a huge. I think it's gonna go the way of like Snapchat, like very soon. Hmm. Especially when a lot of these like creators start to see that they can make more money on Twitter. Hmm. The problem is, it's the thing about when you really dumb it down. TikTok is really it. It's really simple to gain attention there. It's really simple to make content that gains traction. Dude, I've seen videos. You know what I'm talking about? Like those NPC uh, things that like, I don't know. I, I don't even know like what it is, but like some really attractive woman will just say the same thing over and over again. And people are like paying her money. You know what I'm talking about? It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. The it's weirdest. weirdest. And we're not going to have that on. Tw well, maybe they do implement that. I don't know. I don't know. The one thing I would say is I'd say right around <clears throat> last year, 2022, summer of 2022, I think that's when TikTok started to see post peak, right? Yeah. And, and it re TikTok started to pick up 2019. I think it was 2002. It might have even been 2017, 18 to be realistic. Cause it came out earlier than we all know. We all started to hear about it 2019. Right. Yeah. And then it exploded because everyone was sitting on their phones during COVID. Right. That's when it exploded. That's what kept it alive. Whereas it died, vine died out in like what, three, two, two years. Vine yeah. died out. TikTok didn't because it got that extra boost of COVID. Everyone was sitting around on their phones. Um, so three years, let's look, legitimately like a three-year prime of peak time to really pick up steam yeah no i mean i mean it, it could happen for twitter it could happen for twitter my whole thing is the guy who's who's behind it yep like he makes everything happen 
and people they want to knock him and say it's not going to happen it's like bro everything he touches turns to gold and that's just how it is like there are very few things that you can make a more sure bet on than him I agree with that. I agree with that completely. I, I don't know if you remember about 2016, 17 AMD, the stock AMD, the microchip. Do you remember that whole, you had that? I, I held it at one point, but I don't, I don't really know what you're talking about in regards to it. What happened? Well, it was around what, like $1, $3 to nine, between one and $9. That's when the yeah. CEO Lisa Su came over. I think it was Lisa yeah. Su with the U. I forget the name of it. But regardless, it was the that Asian engineer woman who was fantastic. And then she came into the company and just blew it up, just blew it up. And I, this is what I'm saying. Like, I completely agree with you. That's why I've been following Elon Musk for the last like year or two. Like, well, it's going on. So, yeah. And uh, certain people have a magic touch. They just know how to get things done. And that's what they do. So we'll see how it plays out. But, uh, I mean, I don't think you're wrong. I think I should start exploring that whole aspect because it's a different, it's a different community. So I don't know what I, what I realized though was like, um, because I've had people do like shout outs and stuff for the course and people want to have a figure, like a, a face. They feel more connected to a doctor with 10,000 followers doing a story shout out versus uh, an account like yours, right? Uh, or because I use like, I, I went through another account the other day, which has like, um, God, I don't know, like 300,000 followers, which quite honestly, I think a lot of them are fake now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, the amount of like traction, just watching the views, like it does, the page clicks. It doesn't mean like anybody actually like purchasing or something like how how many people actually click the page out of like an account that has like 350,000 followers is like abysmal it's like dude you're buying your likes you're buying all your followers like it's not it's not legit right and then same thing with my other account which uh isn't really like a face it's it's kind of just like a brand even when I post other people or things like that I notice I'll get less link clicks or less people will view because it's not like a direct recommendation from somebody that you follow. Right. Yeah. It's, it's wild how that, how that works. People like people at the yeah. end of the day. Oh yeah. There's no right. Like with people in healthcare and with elite dentists, very similar elite dentists is also tough too, because we had, I think it was around like 12, it was like, it might've been, it was like 12,000 followers or something. And when I caught on that, Right to, around the winter of 2020, right around November, December. And that's when um, Zuckerberg implemented the TikTok algorithm where they went all in on on reels. And yeah. nobody was posting reels yet in November, October, like September, October, November. And then in December, we were posting for a few months. December, people were home for the holidays. End of December, early January. If you were posting TikToks twice a day, which we were doing, we were reposting yeah. TikToks onto Instagram on Elite Dentist. We went from what it was like sixteen thousand followers to to about fifty eight. And since then, since January February of twenty twenty, we've just been losing I don't know like ten followers a day. So that's why we're at fifty five now. But so that that feeds into the point where one, it almost looks like fake followers because the algorithm tripped it into an overdrive mode. But all these followers just like that one video of some guy putting fake plaque on his seat or whatever, whatever the hell it was, right? But the fact is, is that it's it's not a person. It's not someone's face that gained those followers. Yeah. Versus my page, it's like, dude, I I was starting to put out questions for the side company where we're, we're, we were looking for our fourth company website company that could actually get the job done because the first three didn't. Um, yeah. I put in the store. I was like, Hey, does anyone have a website company that, that they can recommend for doing it? Someone reached out within two hours. We got it with this Australian company. They did an outstanding job. It's, it really is. I mean, have you, have you ever listened to Gary Vaynerchuk? All the time, man. I, every, like I, I used to listen to him a lot and literally this past week and a half, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get back into uh Gary Vaynerchuk motivational videos. So when I'm getting ready in the morning, uh, I just put it in the background. He's like just yelling, like, <laughs> but yeah, like he's the best. 
He is, and his, he actually gives solid con- – he gives solid insight. When you listen to the longer videos, he'll go in. He'll go yeah. in for – he was the one that that uh, recommended LinkedIn, and that's when I started to explore and dabble, and then I figured it out. Um, we got we to gotta go in on Twitter. But, okay, we got 10 minutes left. Where did we want to go with um, as far as the course? Did, can, can you want to go into – what are you willing to do as far as marketing your course since we got to get it behind a brand and you are your own personal brand, right? Yeah. How are you? So I have, I think um, because based off retargeting and how that works, it takes a little bit of time. You just have to consistently throw the ads at people over and over again. And I'm seeing uh, based off the retargeted ads, like actual purchases, like it says, one or two purchases based off this ad right Mm -hmm. so i think it just kind of takes the fact that you have to have those seven touch points before you pull the trigger on something right and obviously i think the big thing is reaching out to other influencers like i've had other people that i spoke to who um have their own personal brands. They, they do very well with that type of stuff for online companies. And they said the same thing. You need these like micro influencers. It's annoying. You got to reach out, you got to bug them. You got to do that. But like, if I post something and I say, Hey, look, go follow this person, or this is a great freaking dentist in, in Texas. If you're in Texas, everyone's going to go on that person. Right. Yeah. It just has more staying power. And I, I, I hated that that's, I didn't want that to have to be the case, but it seems like that's going to have to be a bigger part of marketing than I thought. And then you utilize the people that click from their followers there. You already have their data, right? So they've seen your stuff. They showed an interest and now you retarget your ads to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the best way of going about it. And then obviously your own personal brand with what it is that you're doing and dropping the content from time to time or pushing people to to whatever it is that you're trying to push. Right, right. I also, I don't know if you look, but I, I'm not quite a fan of Dr. Avi's push. I, I don't want you to go that direction. If you are to start to, start to make content, I really think you will really succeed if you do it. And I, I, I want to see you succeed. So I kind of want to like figure out whatever algorithm it is for you, content creation wise, that does it. But I don't want you to go that route. I mean, it's... Yeah, you don't even need to talk about it. I already know. I already know. You and I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, but I know what you mean. It's... Uh, he does great stuff, but it's the fully transitioning out of dentistry type of thing, right? Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. and it's, but it's like, it's like the way you're going about doing, like, I totally get it. Like you, you don't want to work clinically in X amount of year. I, I get it. But the fact is you don't translate other dentists money to your pocket in order for you to get the goal. No, no, no. It's, it's like, so, well, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go into it too. It's like very dear like said, you have to provide value. And exactly. Whatever it is that you're selling, if you're providing value, then go for it, you know, but if you're not, if you're trying to scam people and things like that, um, that's not, it's not a good thing. So one of the other, uh, because Kajabi, which is a platform I use, it lets you uh, send out emails all the time. So I have all these, all these emails and people who would say opted in. And um, what I started to do a couple of days back about a week ago was uh, just dental tips. Literally every single day uh, or every other day, send a mass email to everybody who's subscribing. I see exactly I see exactly who clicks it. Right. So you're seeing these people are opening the email and they're taking time to read it. And it's just a random tip. It's not like anything dentistry related. Of this how you place an implant or something like that. It's more so. What is the the whole like other side of dentistry, the business side of dentistry? Like, why do Google reviews matter? Why do you as a nut, young dentist need to focus on getting Google reviews? Because it's your brand, mm. but it's not 
your online brand, right? right? Things like that. Or like, why is it very important to build rapport with your assistants right away, right? I've seen so many young dentists just kind of be aggressive with assistants and kind of brush, brush them off that I'm the doctor. Like, it doesn't matter. It's like, okay, that's fine, but you're going to be in a bad position. And it's little tiny things like that, two, three sentences, um, I want to provide value in that way. Whether you, like, you don't even have to own the course, right? Mm -hmm. You're just on the email list. And if you never purchase it or not, like, you're still going to get those emails. Exactly. So little tiny things like that. How come only email? Uh, well, the thing is, that's like how Kajabi's platform works. Right. So I'd have to basically, I mean, depending on whatever other platform you want to use is like Instagram or LinkedIn or something like that. Like you'd have to go and extract all that data physically from the people. Like you'd have to like, it would be very difficult to get all that information uh, because you'd have to send like emails to them that say, Hey, respond to this email with your Instagram. Uh, I guess it would be easier to kind of push people to like my Instagram and be like, Hey, follow me for this or that. But do people read emails? It's weird. I didn't think that was the case, but like, I I'm literally looking at it like right now and it shows me, okay, how many P how many emails I sent uh, for this? And it says the open rate, how many people actually clicked on the email. So yeah. dude, you get hundred percent open rate on some 80%, uh, 83% on another one. It it's absurd. Like people are clicking and they're, they're reading it. And so you say it's like three sentences in this email. Whatever. I mean, I'll, I'll read you what I'm about to send out tomorrow. What people are going to get. Um, I mean, this one's kind of like a paragraph, right? You make it or is it that information you're taking from Kajabi? Um, it goes into a lot more detail in in kajabi but it's to provide value at the end of the day mm -hmm. uh you can do what you want to do with it like whether that causes you to enroll or not like i want you to recognize me as somebody who's trying to provide value right you yeah no, i understand that but this information this valuable information are are you just typing it in or are you getting it from kajabi no 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 this is me this is like my personal experiences as a dentist and as somebody who's uh, had conversations with other people who are dentists and kind of whatever it is that I've gathered since basically the past four years almost. Exactly. So why isn't that on Instagram or Twitter or. Hmm. I might have to do that on, I might have to do that on Twitter. What if Instagram you that Twitter gets just as many open rates as email? That That's what I mean. The cross pollination thing. Yeah, the instru the the thing is though with uh, with posting on Instagram is I have a lot of patients that follow me, right? And if I post content like this, like how to increase your sales, how to like get more patients to spend money is what it kind of comes off to them. It, you're kind of in a very dicey situation at that point. I understand. Don't I? I understand that part. Yeah. I do. What are I think a little different? Um, in that regards and uh, there's not a lot of like everyday people on it so i guess like hmm, i might do that i might actually I might actually try to start doing that and see if it works and maybe i found sometimes coupling something with a figure on linkedin coupling it with a figure much better if the figure yeah. has something that ties to with the content yeah yeah just try things that we got less than a minute now but um i i love this stuff content creation i just Dude, building brand, it, marketing, not advertiser, but, con you know, yeah, yeah. It is what it is, man. But uh, I guess I'll let you go. Our time's uh, coming to a close right now. We got to do this again. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. Let's um, let's pick a topic for the next. Let's pick a date. Let's pick a topic. Okay. And we'll dive into maybe just one or two or three things tops, you know, and then we'll let's do that again. I also want to see. Yeah, I want to hear about you. Like, let's let's start marketing this thing, but through organic value. Yeah, let's do it, man. Yeah. All right, dude. Let you go. Enjoy yeah, the rest. when we figure out how it works, we'll figure out the the dentist man. We'll get there for sure, man. I'll uh, I'll shoot you a DM and we'll figure stuff out. All right, brother. All right, see ya.